Now before we open up Access 2016, I want you to know that when I create my databases, I'm going to be storing them here in my Exercises folder on the desktop. In fact, let's go ahead and double click to open it up to take a look inside. And hey, I already have a database in there titled Books. Isn't that nice? Let's go ahead and close out and open up the Access 2016 program, which I can do either by double clicking on the shortcut to the program on my desktop or the shortcut down below on the taskbar with a single click. Opens up the startup screen to access, and here I can basically do three things. I can either go ahead and click and create a blank database from scratch, or I have to create the objects in there, the tables, the forms, reports, queries, or I can do a pre-built one and then tweak the tables, forms, reports to whatever suits my database needs, but that way I don't have to do it from scratch, or if you have a database that you want to open up that's on your computer or on the network or even on the cloud, well, come over here, good neighbor, and you can see under the recent heading, we have the most recent databases that I opened up, which is nice because to open them up, I can just go ahead and click on it and it will open up that database. That is, if that database is still there. Now you can see right here the address for this database, the CI2 relationships. It says it's on the desktop in the exercises or the exercises folder. And you can see when I hover over it, it gives me the true address, which starts with the C drive. Well, let me go back up and hover over it again. In that pop-up, the C drive, the users that are logged in under was training on the desktop in the exercises folder is the name of the database. Now remember, in the exercises folder, we just looked inside of there and we didn't see this. So I either deleted it or moved it. In any case, if I try to open it up by clicking on it, what is it going to do? Let me click on it. It gives me cannot find the file error. So, all right, click okie dokie. Now it doesn't take me back to the startup screen, but it takes me backstage. Basically, another place for me to, well, go ahead and create a blank database, do a built-in, or say, you know what, I don't want a new database. I really want to open up a database. So over here in the navigation bar, you can click on Open. And hey, there we go. We've got Recent here, and we can select from other options. But in any case, let me stop for a minute, close out because I want to finish up the tutorial in the startup screen and then we'll go backstage. So let's go ahead and go back and open up Access again. This time double click the shortcut on the desktop and we're back to the startup screen. And so now that we know that we can't open the CI2 relationships because it's not in that folder, what we can do is we can go ahead and right click on it and say we want to remove it. That way we're not fooled into going, oh, let me go ahead and click on it, or it's cumbersome that it's taking up valuable real estate space here under the recent heading. Now we know that Books is in the folder, so when I click on that, hey, it opens up the Books database with their objects, tables, queries, forms, and reports. Let's go ahead and close out and open up Access 2016 again so I can finish my tutorial on the startup screen. And so we've got that link to the books, the one that I've opened up recently there. And when I open up other databases, this one, if I don't open up recently, begins to, well, start going down the list until it rolls off because it's so old. If I want to be able to keep it there, whether or not I opened it up recently and I open up like 30 other databases so it doesn't roll off, I can go ahead and hover over the pin and click on it and it turns the pin down so you can see now it's pinned. So if I don't open up this database at all, it doesn't matter. It'll always be there. It will never roll off because it's no longer categorized as something that's being recent. It's just pinned and will always be there. Of course, I can go ahead and unpin it. So if it's something that I haven't opened up in a while as something recent compared to dozens of other databases that I've opened up, it'll disappear. So if you can't find your database as something that you recently opened up or it's a new one that you want to open up, and then you can come down here and click on Open Other Files. And when you click on it, startup screen disappears and you're backstage and this is what we saw just a minute or two ago so backstage you've got your navigation bar so you can do something new if you'd like and there's your templates or let's go to open because we want to open up something so when I select open we can go to the first section here and it says hey you can open up something recent which is nice because well look over to the far right and you can see everything that was opened up recently well for today and you can see the address there you can also pin it, unpin it, right click on it, everything that we did in the startup screen you can do here as well. Let me click off. And again, if it's not there and you want to be able to open it up, well, 
you got a couple of choices down below. If it's on the OneDrive, which is a Microsoft server known as the cloud, because it's mysterious, it's somewhere out there at an undisclosed location, that is basically a computer that you connect to that you can store your files to. In any case, you can go ahead and select OneDrive. When you select that, updates the far right screen where you can go ahead and, well, there's a, an explanation of it in graphical form. So it goes somewhere mysteriously out there. It's just a computer in somebody's warehouse or Microsoft's warehouse, as it were. In any case, you can go ahead and sign in and then connect to that server, that computer that's somewhere out there, and be able to save your files to or open them up and view them on your computer. Now, if it's not on the OneDrive, you can go to, well, your computer, this PC. And then over to the far right, it updates and it says, OK, here's a bunch of folders. Is it in one of these folders? Of course not. So we have to go up a level. And when you click on the up, it goes up. And hey, there's my desktop. So I can click on that. What's on my desktop? It's the exercises folder. Well, others, but I want to click on the exercises folder. And hey, there it is. Oh, isn't that nice? Now, you can do it that way if you'd like. Or if you just want to do a simple browse, opens up the open window. And it takes me right to, well, there's the address. I'm logged in as training. And on the desktop in the exercises folder, there's the books. Now I can come over here in the navigation pane and select desktop. And over here, updates on the desktop, there's my exercises folder. Double click on that, and there's books. And I can go ahead and, of course, select it and click on open. Whether you're opening up a database or creating a new one from scratch, the work environment is going to be pretty much the same. In that, well, let me give you an overview of everything that you're looking at here briefly by coming up here in the upper left-hand corner. And you've got a few commands here that are on what's called the Quick Access Toolbar. And it's called that because you can quickly access any command on it in a single click, like the Save button here. And I'll show you in a later training video how you can customize that by adding or removing commands from the Quick Access Toolbar. And then to the right of that, You've got the title bar because you have the title of your database, books. And then over to the right, you've got the address to your database, starting from the hard drive, the user that you're logged in as training. On the desktop in the exercises folder is the name of that file, that database, books. And then you've got a dot, and the name extends, or what's called the extension. And you've got a bunch of letters there that tells the operating system what program to open up this file in. So when you double click on your books database, it doesn't open up in the Microsoft Word program because that ain't going to work. And then over to the right, you've got the file format. And the compatibility for access is, well, from 2000 to 2016, basically having the same file format so it's compatible. 2007, 2010, 2013, and 2016 as opposed to an earlier version like 2003, you're going to run into some issues in your database if you try to work with an earlier version of a database and some of the uh, features that are not available in those earlier versions. And then you can sign in, meaning that, well, you can hover over it. You can log in to a Microsoft server, upload this, save it to it, and then log in to anywhere there's internet connection and retrieve your database file. And then you've got help, click on that. And then you've got your Windows operating buttons. You can minimize this window down to the taskbar, restore it down so it doesn't fill up the whole screen. And then of course you can close out of the program completely. And then down below that, you've got a bunch of commands that are organized onto what's called a ribbon. And the ribbon has a bunch of tabs here. So you can imagine if you have all the commands and not on separate tabs, it would fill up and bring the bar down or the ribbon quite a ways here. And so instead of putting everything into one place, it's organized. So if I want to create something, go ahead and click on the Create tab. Like if I want to create a table, well, there you go. Table, queries, forms, reports, macros, and coding. Fabulous. And what helps to keep it organized on the tab to spot what you want to do, in this case, when it comes to creating something, is that it's sectioned off into groups. So you've got a line between the tables and the queries. And so... You've got a line between that and then a line over here. And everything in those two lines is called a group and it's labeled tables. Let me go back to the Home tab. Now you may find some groups that if they have more commands than what you see there, it'll have in the bottom right hand corner the More button or the Expandable Dialog Box button. That when I click on it, in this case, it opens up the clipboard. And I can work with that, but let me close out of it. Now up on the ribbon, you've got a bunch of tabs that when you click on it, well, on this tab, the external data, you can import or export your data. 
and so you can see it keeps everything the same except when I go to the file tab when I click on the file tab it wipes away the screen here and takes me to what's called the backstage the working area for the environment that I'm working on which gives me some options that I can go ahead and set that we'll talk about in a later training video but more of the basics here is that you can go ahead and do some printing close out of the database open up another database you know what we talked about earlier here and to get back to the front stage because we want to work on the database not the elements of the database including like properties of the database let me go ahead and click on it where I can go ahead and store the title of the database, the subject, the author, the manager of the database, or of the project that this database is a part of. However you want to go ahead and organize that there, it has the fields. A place where instead of creating a separate table in the database, where you can type all this information. You've got the properties right here. Let me go ahead and click Cancel. So to get back to where I can go ahead and see my database and the objects, just go ahead and click the back arrow and I'm back to the front stage, the working area, and not, well, backstage behind the scenes, as it were. And then down below that, over to the left-hand side, you have the navigation bar that lists, well, all the objects that we've created so far, like our tables, queries, forms, and reports, and if I don't want to see, like, maybe the tables, because I have mm, 50 tables, and I have to scroll down to see the queries, I can go ahead and click on the double arrows to collapse it, and it brings the queries up to the top here. Fabulous. Let me go ahead and expand it. You can also click on the objects drop down arrow and down below you can do a filter so if you want to click and collapse all of this you can instead say well I just want to focus on reports select it and there you go just reports so when you're looking at the access database you're like oh my goodness I thought there were tables well be sure to go ahead and click on the drop down arrow and make sure it's not filtered so we want to go back to all access objects and there we go back to where we were and then if you need more room you can go ahead and click on the shutter bar to open or close the navigation pane here click on it collapses do your thing and then when you want to go ahead and bring it back up just click anywhere on it you don't have to click let me click on that on the double arrow there just go ahead and click anywhere on it brings it back up and lastly that if I want to go ahead and open up a table well it's listed here just go ahead and give it a double click and it opens up over in the main working area the window here and so you can go ahead and look through it and it's just like an Excel spreadsheet in that it's got cells and so you've got a cell for the employee ID, a cell for the last name, first name and the department code and all of these cells here for this row make up a record and who's it for? It's Mr. Max Klinger and then when you're done you can go ahead and of course click on the X to close out of it and then finally down below on the status bar you can see right now it's ready. If, if there's anything that's informational that will help us when working on an object, it will display here. And then over to the far right, looks like it's keeping track. If we have our number locks on, if I hit the number locks key on the keyboard, it turns it off. Hit it again, it brings it back up. In any case, if you want to customize the status bar because maybe you don't want to see whether or not you have number locks on, go ahead and right click anywhere on it. See, right click there, right click there. Brings up the same shortcut menu and there's number locks when I go ahead and deselect it it disappears but let me go ahead and bring it back up thanks for watching hey as a quick reminder if you like my video please give it a thumbs up you can also click on me and subscribe to my channel get notified of the latest videos and for only two dollars a month you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos